Okay, first things first. I am no expert on uh, air conditioning. Uh, I don't. I hope I don't come across as pretending to be. All I'm trying to do is actually transfer what I've what I know about uh, air conditioning to you to put the servicing video in context. A simplified version of the air conditioning system that's in the uh, SX4, uh, exploiting the uh, uh, the laws of physics and the transitions between a liquid and gas or a gas to a liquid state. Uh, if we transition from a liquid to a gas, we can absorb a great deal of heat. And the reverse is true if we go from a gas to a liquid, we can actually give off a great deal of heat. So again, the whole point to uh, an air conditioning system is to take objectionable outside air outside the cabin of the car. Uh, typically it's hot and humid and actually transition it to a desirable uh, state, right? The qualities of air typically are cool and are dry, makes for a comfortable uh, driver and other occupants. And how do we actually achieve it in reality? So we'll start off with the compressor itself. The compressor, as you can well imagine, compresses um, the suction air here, the return line, if you will. We'll start at this point here. Uh, so we have return uh, low pressure gas that's coming back, low pressure refrigerant, which happens to be R134A. Low pressure refrigerant comes into the suction line of the uh, compressor. Uh, it is actually controlled via a magnetic clutch which is controlled if there's a demand, if you want air conditioning, if, uh, if the temperatures call for it, the body control module tells the ECM, yeah, we're looking for air conditioning. ECM controls the relay, which then actually controls the mag clutch. Also controls the relay, which operates the condenser fan, but that's the sidebar note, right? So the compressor will actually take that, that return gas, if you will, low pressure state, and actually compresses it. And anytime you, uh, you up the pressure of a gas, as you can well imagine, the temperature is going to increase. So the orange line here is a superheated vapor. The yellow, I should have mentioned, is just a vapor state. And the blue is liquid state in the uh, schematic here, just so we can clearly understand it. So we take this superheated gas. We actually pipe it to the condenser. Uh, the condenser is nothing more than a heat exchanger. So what we're trying to do is dump the heat from the refrigerant and exchange it to the outside air. That's the whole point of the condenser. So we do so by drawing air via the fan. Uh, through the front grill of the car. So it's a heat exchanger. And when the whole point of the condenser is, as the name implies, is to condense the refrigerant from a gas to a liquid state. Anytime we go from a gas to a liquid state, as I mentioned up here, we can give off a great deal of heat. What heat? The heat that's actually in the refrigerant itself. We use the refrigerant as a transport mechanism in order to dump the heat from, from the inside of the cabin to eventually outside the cabin. So it's the condenser coil that will actually dump the heat from the refrigerant itself. As it does so, it goes from superheated vapor to a vapor and then actually to uh, a liquid state. Uh, the res receiver dryer on the side of the condenser itself basically just utilized to absorb any moisture or filter any impurities. So down on the lower end of the uh, condenser where it's actually transitioned to a liquid, that's actually piped back to um, the firewall before it does so, it crosses a, a pressure switch. The uh, ECM monitors the, uh, the state pressure in the system for control purposes. Again, back on this end of things. Um, and there's also, not shown on the drawing, there's actually a temp sensor in the evaporator coil as well. But again, that's for refinement, for control, uh, as far as the ECM, the body control module in the ECM is concerned. So as the liquid refrigerant actually makes its way back to the firewall, right at the firewall, basically, uh, not an orifice or restrictor, uh, but an expansion valve. Essentially, just uh, controlling the flow and dropping the pressure of the liquid refrigerant that actually circulates through the system. Again, uh, that would be a function of the differential temperatures uh, between the two lines. That you know, That's why you can see in the schematic it actually crosses the two lines. The uh, So the liquid refrigerant actually would, at this point, make its way back up to the evaporator coil. What's the point of the evaporator coil? Um, again, anytime we go from a liquid to a gaseous state, we're going to absorb a great deal of heat. So what heat are we trying to absorb? Uh, the heat that's in the outside air itself that we would then want a uh, forward into the cabin. Um, not shown on the drawing here is the blower fan, which actually forces the air to do so through the ductwork. So as that liquid uh, refrigerant actually comes into the evaporator coil, uh, it transitions uh, in state. The boiling point of this refrigerant is extremely low. So as you drop the pressure, refrigerant wants to transition state again from liquid to gas. It will boil at this point. 
And by doing so, again, uh, by evaporating, again, it will absorb a great deal of heat. Where does it absorb that heat? Through the coil itself, as it will absorb the heat energy from the outside air, giving us the ability to take that outside air that's hot and humid and forward it into the cabin in a nice, cool and dry state. At which point in time, the, the uh, gaseous refrigerant is returned back to the compressor and the whole cycle actually repeats. So, very clever. Very clever indeed. Okay, so you saw what it looked like in uh, schematic form. Here's what it actually looks like in reality. Let's start uh, the same way we started on the schematic. So uh, here's the uh, the compressor itself, located uh, in front end of the uh, the car, uh, just aft of the uh, the condenser coil and the uh, the radiator assembly itself, complete with the uh, condenser fan. Of course, you'll find the. Uh, um, the compressor. Uh, I've tried to keep the color coding consistent uh, so you can see that the the low pressure gas comes back to the compressor. Compressed in the compressor of course again the mag clutch is in front of the uh, on the front of the housing. With the mag clutch disengaged the uh, of course the pulley turns but the uh, the drive to the compressor itself is not actually engaged of course unloading the uh, the engine. You wouldn't want to be constantly driving your compressor if there was no need. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of different ways of doing that, but that 10 years ago, this was very typical. With the uh, magnetic clutch engaged, the compressor is actually driving, of course, compressing the gas, compressing it to uh, superheated vapor. That superheated vapor making its way to the condenser itself. The condenser, here's the receiver dryer unit. Again, basically a desiccant and a, a filter, uh, drying and taking the impurities uh, out of the uh, refrigerant. Uh, at which point in time, uh, the uh, blue line here, uh, the condensed uh, refrigerant uh, in liquid state is actually piped to the expansion valve itself. The expansion valve is located right on the front of the uh, firewall and behind the firewall is all the ductwork of course, uh, including the uh, the blower fan not shown on the drawing, but is, is uh, actually it is kind of the plastic surround is shown. That's where the blower fan is actually housed. And of course the, the heater matrix in addition to the evaporator coil is all housed inside the assembly here and all the damper doors actually controlling the flow of course. So once it goes across the evaporator, of course it's evaporated, the liquid state changes back to the uh, gaseous state, uh, absorbing the heat energy that's actually drawn from the outside, put across the evaporator coil, nice, cool and comfortable. And uh, the liquid condensate is actually drained out from the uh, from the evaporator coil uh, at this point as well. That's why you see the water, of course, dripping onto the uh, onto the ground overboard uh, from the car itself. And the low pressure gas is actually uh, under suction. It's not really suction, it's still pressure, but it's relative suction compared to the uh, high side. Uh, it's drawn back to the compressor and the whole cycle actually repeats. So I hope that makes some sense. Okay, I've already dragged this out way too long, so um, I'll leave it at that. Cheers, Jessica. Voice.